Okay, so today we'll study uh, timely authentication. We'll start with access control and later on we'll uh, do more studies on access control. Okay, uh, these are the sources. I have taken content. Uh, you can take it from anywhere. This is very common topic. All the lectures everywhere, all the books have tons of information on this topic. Okay, so these are the things we'll cover today. Very briefly, we'll look at control mechanisms and I will leave it to you to find out from books and read more. Uh, <clears throat> we'll look at authentic, what is base authentication? What are the ways of implementing authentication? Look at a password as one mechanism of authentication. <laughs> Can you mute your mouth? How are you? Hello. Please mute your mic. It doesn't help. Okay. All right. So last class we have covered the following. We have covered the security principles. All these security principles like know your threat model, trusted computing base, consider human factors, security is economics, detect if you can't prevent, defense in depth, least privileges, separation of responsibility, ensure complete mediation, don't rely on security through obscurity, use fail safe default, design in security from so now these are very important principles. We will keep using this in the rest of the course, and there will be a lot of questions that we'll ask on this in the exam. Okay. Then in the last class we studied the CIA model. We looked at we started with the concept of trusting trust. It means that you can't trust any software that you are using until you have written the software by yourself, and you have also written the compiler. Okay. Then we look at the concept of confidentiality. That if Alice is sending something to Bob, okay, over the insecure channel, okay, then in between anybody, including Eve or Mallory or something, should not be able to read what Alice is sending to Bob. Okay, that's confidential. Integrity is that. If Alice is sending something to Bob, then in between anyone, say Mallory, should not be able to change the content. Okay, whatever Alice is sending, Mallory should not be able to change. If Mallory says to Bob, I love you, Mallory, if Alice sends I love you to Bob, then Mallory should not change it to I hate you. Okay, that is integrity. Availability is that anybody say Mallory should not be able to disconnect communication between Alice and Bob. Okay. Authenticity is when Bob receives message from Alice, then Bob should be certain that is coming from Alice only from nobody else. Authorization, we have not studied much, but okay. <clears throat> Actually, it should be, uh, yeah, it's auth authorization means that system allows a user to do certain things, right? Okay, we'll study this concept today in more detail. Non-reputation is that if Alice is sending mail to Bob, the, and then later on, Bob should be able to prove that message has come from Alice only. I'm trying to figure out how to mute yourself, all of you. Okay, no problem. 
all right then access control that we have studied in brief and today we we'll look at the <clears throat> okay we have also looked at the weakest link which is human being everywhere there is a problem you will see there are human beings are involved machines don't make so much mistakes as human beings do okay close to if if a organization is hacked and ransomware is placed which will ask company to pay millions of dollars there's good probability there is internal employees involved in this okay all right internal firm might have passed knowingly or unknowingly this information to somebody all right so all these concepts you said in the last class okay now we have a threat if there is a system that is to protect it and all around it are the you know criminals who are trying to get into it okay now of course criminals can get criminals have to find out the ways to get into a system because the, the system tries to protect itself okay all right so then we there very <clears throat> control mechanism which are to be designed or to secure this system this system could be your campus or your uh, hostel or and so on right okay so there are controls or which we call as counter measures okay <clears throat> it means that we have to counter threats and how do we counter threats because you know a threat can cause a harm then we'll have to do something first thing is to prevent it if invader is trying to get into your campus make sure your campus walls are high enough such that invader cannot come inside so basically you are blocking the attack or you have one gate you should have multiple gates if you have one gate or two gates for example in the campus where people can come in then both have proper security or security guards camera etc so basically criminals will not try to get into your campus right now <clears throat> defer it okay knowing that you, you cannot stop criminals to come inside but you should do something to make attack harder for criminals okay so for example you can have ferocious dogs right so criminals will find out how to overcome dogs sooner or later but <clears throat> it will take time so basically you are trying to defer it okay third is they deflect it okay essentially making other target more attractive okay now there are various ways in system to do this okay uh, you can create honey pot you can uh, you can uh, you know you, you create a honey pot may, maybe a website which look very similar to yours or you know if it, some request come which is suspicious uh, which are which uh, you may not in a request comes to get into you just deflect it to similar system where there there is a kind of honey plot uh, pot okay mitigate it basically try try to uh, ensure that its impact is less severe okay it means that you let attack happen but impact is very little okay maybe maybe you know if armed criminals are getting into say boys hostel then maybe maybe security guards should empower should should overpower them okay detect it if nothing else you can do then detect it now many organizations don't have enough security mechanisms right because you are doing your startup your focus is in your work right you cannot uh, spend millions of dollars because you have just funding of few lakhs and and there is cyber attack on your system okay what do you do then you just you just have to find out If there is attack and then recover from it reboot your system or you know do something around it or keep copy of your software and then reload it okay so okay so these are the mechanism so when we study cyber security or any kind of security 
okay then you have to consider these factors okay so these are traditional control mechanisms which we already studied in first lecture like we have a strong gate at the fort okay then cyber criminals or sorry not cyber <laughs> regular criminals or enemies will not be able to enter then you can have heavy walls like this okay or you can have surrounding moat the kind of water here around it okay you can have a narrow slits uh, somewhere here okay you can have a drawbridge you know bridge which can unfold uh, when all the authorized people are coming then it should be allowed to pass through you can have gatekeepers and so on right in home you have all these things log grills doors etc etc right so in general think of this diagram if there is an intrusion attempt and this is your system which you are protecting this is a perimetry of system or maybe your boundary wall of your campus something like that okay first is you preempt it don't let it happen okay so this is called extension prevention mechanism and then there has got to be some big some of these attempts are deterred so some some of these will go away some will enter then you should have internal prevention for example second layer of security guards security guards in front of hostel for example or or dogs or whatever okay then you can deflect some of the once you recognize that there is an attempt just deflect it if you can find out you know something is for example your website is under attack there are millions of requests are coming from bots what can you do you deflect these requests to somewhere else if once you note once you identify the threat instead of processing those requests you just deflect it to somewhere okay and so on so these are the me mechanisms if nothing else is works then then find out that there is a there is an attempt and do something around it to protect your system or shut down your system or do something about it all right types of control could be physical procedural technical and so on please go through it by yourself these are very simple okay now our focus comes to access control all right what do you mean by access control we have we use access control every day right you go to movie theater and then if you don't have ticket you are not allowed to get in you can go to airport then again you are checked your your passport or your uh, id card before you are allowed first level of entry right and so on so access control has the following important components first is identification second is authentication third is authorization what do you mean by identification how do you allow somebody to enter for example airport so person you are you 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 for example alice is trying to enter airport now alice is just a human being it could be a machine also right or anybody or machine or maybe maybe a uh, a request or a, you know connection request for tcp okay so now L in our example l is trying to enter airport Alice has to prove uh, now Alice could be uh, no airport allows only people who are airport in India for example allow people to enter airport inside airport who are traveling and who are not criminal non criminal okay this is a difficult condition to check or those who have who can identify themselves and those who have say ticket valid ticket or gate pass or whatever okay 
Now, here there is an unknown person standing in front. Then what Alice has to do? Alice has to prove her identity. Now, what will Alice do? Alice will show her passport if she is carrying passport, right? Or or Aadhaar card. What this person will do here? Now, first level check is just we'll look at the Aadhaar card, passport. Okay, and then check uh, get pass or ticket, and look at the look at her her face and see that whether it matches with that in ID card. So identification of a person it means that Alice must be given some identity. Otherwise, she is just a human being. Okay, so this body of Alice has got to be given some identification, and which you know all that ID card, user ID card, passport, or whatever. Okay, second step is authentication. This guy here, a security personnel, must. Check whether identity matches with what she is claiming to be. Okay, look at the photo. Identity will look at the photo and then allow her to get in. So this guy is doing security guy is doing role of authentication. Okay, got it. Now third step is authorization. Now note that this security guard is also allowing pilots to come inside, right? They will all to have to prove their identity. Okay, but authorization for Alice as an ordinary person or ordinary citizen will be different from that of pilot. Alice is allowed to go to check-in counter or do you know maybe a restaurant inside or or do something or roam around. But pilots are allowed to go into a different area altogether. Pilots are allowed to get go to the plane also, right? Directly to the cockpit, which you are not allowed. Okay, they are allowed to certain parts of airport which Alice is not allowed, right? So authorization for everyone is different. There may be CEO of the airport will have different authorization. Okay. Now the guy who's controlling traffic will have different kind of authorization to get into different part of the airport, okay? So this authorization enforces limit on actions. Okay, when you enter an office as an ordinary person, an ordinary software engineer, you will have different access rights. Okay, you, or, or you know, you may be able to go to your work area and when you log in again, then you are allowed to do only certain things. Where CEO will have all together different Access rights. Okay, your IT guy will have different access rights. There are many organizations don't allow software engineers or ordinary workers to get into IT area. Okay, where IT is managed or or your know, servers are. Okay. All right. So now let's focus on this part authentication. All right. So basic problem is that we have dis already discussed. How do you prove to someone that you are who you claim to be? So Alice has to claim that Alice claims that she is Alice and this security guard, she should be able to prove to security guards, yes, I am Alice. Alice, right? Okay, how do you solve this problem? It means Alice should have some given identity. Okay, and she should be able to prove it. For example, uh, think of the places you are allowed to enter and you have to prove your identity, like your JWE examination hall. If you have given physically JWE exam, then you'll have to prove your identity. Similarly, airport, log into banking account. Okay, all right. So user authentication is proving your identity to a system. Now, when you are logging to your banking account, what is your identity? Anyone? Uh, 
account number yeah your account number or user id right and how does uh, then your banking software allows you to get into they will throw you a challenge that give your password okay once you write once you enter the password system checks it then you you are you are allowed to use the banking account okay all right simple so this so first is that alice has to prove her identity using something like admission paper or your id card or whatever like for j j double e or you know somebody some center somewhere you will get some card admission card right and this usually has to be a forgery proof right okay otherwise somebody can pose as you and can give the exam it happens very often in interviews right i mean um, especially it happened in hyderabad with me that somebody else gave the interview posing as somebody else somebody else joined but of course we could catch it because we made it mandatory take photograph of the person okay but many people sneak through i mean at least is suspect uh, many statistics say that at least maybe 1% or so people working in industry are fake okay this exactly mechanism they use second is authorization then alice is allowed to use resources based on what authorization right she has once she is able to prove authentication then alice can use some resources all right what resources depending on what are the authorization right she has all right so now again remember this thing because we will come across these concepts very often authentication says who you are okay authorization is that does this person have permission to access requested resources it will check like security guard in previous example will check what all she can do and then system accordingly will allow to use computer resources all right now authentication goals are user or principal for example alice with an identity maybe id card or whatever or 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 account number or whatever should be able to successfully authenticate her, herself or itself and there should not be no false negatives what do you mean by false negatives anybody see alice is genuine person you are genuine person you are denied access to for example j w e hall it does this is a false negative it should not be there should not be any false negative it should be minimum false negatives a genuine person who can prove his or her identity is not allowed by system similarly a system who is faking as you should not be allowed to come uh, give exam and that's called <clears throat> so so that so they should not be there there has to be no false positive also right there somebody as yeah, somebody is a criminal cyber criminal or criminal posing as you or cyber criminal posing as should not be get access into your banking account if this happens then there are too many false positives are there right so system should try to maximize minimize false negative and also minimize false positives okay all right any question read this quiz a huh? question you have no personal device say mobile phones that are not shared across multiple users and earlier we used to have pst and phone and whole home used to use a single phone right but now when mobile phones are personal phones normally we don't share okay so what threat motivates use of authentication in such devices now 
like you know, I have a screen code wherein I enter the screen code or passcode that allows me to enter, or I can have a, you know biometrics also. Which of the two malware infection that may infiltrate sensitive data or loss of data when with theft of device? Yeah, tell me. Yeah, I'm asking you guys. Are you are you able to see this? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Tell me. Uh, give answers. So what guess, happens if you have not log, logged your phone? If you are not logged your phone and you lost your phone, then if it happens to go to a cyber criminal, we'll see what all inside and we'll be able to send emails or whatever, right? So this is surely true. Second, this is also true. Malware infection that may infect sensitive data because you don't have any. What do you have security in your mobile phone? What I mean, we'll look at mobile phone security later. How do you secure your mobile phone apart from this? This is actually correct. Main answer is this, but second answer is partially correct because malware, if you don't have any security mechanism, assuming that this passcode translates to some lock inside. Right, is kind of you uh, login uh, for for your mobile phone. Then first is also true, but but do you mean okay? This may also be wrong. I I purposely uh, told you this. How do you access? You know, your mobile receives uh, IP packets all the time. It doesn't wait for you to receive your WhatsApp message, right? You. Even when you are sleeping, it receives, right? So your IP connection is always on, even when the mobile phone is logged from outside, right? So basically, this mechanism, passcode mechanism, is mainly for external. Somebody, when your phone is stolen, then you may lose data. Of course, go through this. Authentication is very painful. You now, what will happen? You know. You you go to your hostel. You know you have just twenty minutes for taking, you know, doing something and then going to cafeteria for lunch, and uh, and security guard says that prove your identity. Now you take out your uh, uh, you know ID card and security guard says that this ID card doesn't work. Okay, maybe you you have your driving license. Says that I don't care about it. Show me the uh, identity card issued by your hostel. Okay, so the guard is doing the job because guard has given this policy of securing you. Okay, but this, this authentication can be, is usually painful. Okay, for example, in, in my apartment complex, there is there are two gates, in gate and out gate, and there are about one thousand flats. One thousand flats, right? Now, I, now, uh, you know, if if I am coming, I am living here for ten years. If I and security guards keep changing, depending on who gets contract and so on. If he asks me that who are you, then you know. Ideally, I should say I am so and so, and I am going. The, I own this house, and I am going there. That's fine. The perfect answer, right? Then he may further probe. Okay, uh, do you have any identity card or something? Then I should be able to produce that. But I have seen people fighting over it because I am living here 15 years. How can you stop me? 
Now, all these are wrong things, right? The person is given policy to check you to, for your security and should be allowed to do that. Okay. Oh, no, so with this point, we already discussed identities have got to be given. Okay, whatever it is, email address, mobile address, account ID, user ID, whatever, et cetera, et cetera. And user identity are, of course, not only name, but also, you know, all this, right? Mobile number, email, bank account, passport number. So all these give us identity. Okay, no, but the point here is that, no, access control requires identity, two parts, right? and authentication. So a cyber criminal wants to break into somebody's account, first he has to get identity of the person and then authentication will be done by system. So it basically cyber criminal must have also set password or something. Okay, so that it, he or she gets authenticated. It's a two part, remember, huh? If cyber criminal doesn't know, know you, then cannot get into your system. So, but, so basically you are simplifying his task by making your identity public. For example, many of you, you know, will have Facebook account or maybe Instagram account or whatever. Uh, or maybe Twitter or whatever. Now, if I collect all the information about you from all the sources, including LinkedIn and so on, so forth, where you are proudly given in Facebook your birthday also, which is a security parameter. Okay, and you have also posted a photo that you are in Hawaii and so on, so forth. Actually, you're leaking your identity fully. Okay, including sometimes your email address, including your, your, your phone number and so on and so forth, right? So you're simplifying the job of cyber criminal. That's the reason it's, it's uh, after doing this course, it's expected that you remove uh, possibly most important information about your identity from social media accounts. You can have it still, but don't post, uh, you know, don't uh, share your photographs, for example. Okay, you uh, don't, don't, uh, you know, give your address there, you don't give your date of birth, mobile number and so on and so forth, right? Okay. All right, this we have already discussed. Now, how do we implement authentication? It means the first thing, the user has got to have something to identify himself or herself with, right? So we can have many ways, right? Something that user knows, something that user has, for example, cinema hall ticket, or something that user is, or also the fourth thing, which is also used for authentication, where, what place the user is. All right, when you are, suppose, uh, some time back, I traveled to Bhutan. Okay, and then I did a credit card transaction. Immediately, I got a call from a credit card company that is this transaction valid before they approved your transaction. Because, because the, the place from where I did transaction was not the place where I live. So this could be a method of this is also a method of uh, authentication. For example, if you're trying to, now your, your, your uh, IP message, IP packet contains your IP address. Now this IP address belongs to a place in North Korea. Then your firewall must have a rule that a packet coming from North Korea or Pakistan should be blocked. You can have, right? So this place also becomes uh, a major or the way method of authenticating you. All right. 
so for the, no the first thing was something that the user knows a password for example pin uh, answer to life questions right i mean uh, so for example if you forget your password your reset password and then banking website will say some secret questions how many you know that you have said earlier right how many brothers sisters you are what is your father's initial name or whatever okay it could be credit card numbers postal address mother's middle name all these are something that user knows then authentication can also be based on something that a user has like ticket in cinema hall they don't care whoever has ticket can come inside go inside right or it could be mobile phone right i mean a person with a particular sims would be allowed to enter and so on so forth smart cards a limited edition pin driver's license and identity card etc etc right okay uh, some or maybe passport etc etc something if the user is user is something related to his body okay or her body for example fingerprint voice print iris code biometrics gate analysis etc etc right so this all biometric okay and what place we are in like ip address or geolocation that we have already discussed right now this is a typical way authentication is uh, implemented when you log in try to log in to any system first thing you do is you interface with the os you can't directly go to a software right a login software first always user interface with os and os have something called system calls etc which you will study in os course and then it invokes login program then it prompts you with login uh, you know prompt and you enter your password okay and then user is either authenticated or requested rejected and if it's authenticated as user shell will be created and then you can use the system right that's normal way okay so quiz now a number of online banking system sends limited lifetime pin which we call it otp one time pin, uh, pin right to your smartphone for you to be able to authenticate yourself to the bank so this is example of what something you have or something you are otp that you receive which of the two is true something you have yes something you have not something you are this corresponds to your, your physical aspect right your body eye iris what a fingerprint etc etc very good right so now our focus is here we'll look at these aspects little later actually we'll look at maybe something little later but now we focus on something a user knows and most important thing is password Okay. Now, so user. Okay. Who who gives you password? You have your identity. For example, uh, in your uh, institute, uh, my identity is with my name or email address. And some system accept email address. Some accept my name at IIT whatever. Monday at AC dot in. This identity your institute has given to me. I am not using my other card here. I am not using your passport number, etc. etc. Right? This identity is given to me. Okay, or it could be just uh, some username. And then who should give me password? Who has given you password? I'm asking you. You think like a criminal, huh? If somebody has given me password, then person can uh, already knows my user ID, can use my account. A bank gives you a password, 
then somebody who works in bank can use my password and uh, can transfer all my money to some account. Okay. So ideally, the best thing is that you generate your password by yourself interacting with system. Nobody should give you password, but it happens in your organization that somebody gives a password, which is a wrong practice. Nobody should give you, no human being should be involved to send you an email that your password for the account is this. It's a wrong practice, right? It's, it's, a, it's a big security flaw because if I don't change password, that same person can use my credentials, which he or she has given to do any cyber security fraud. Okay, all right. Then how is password communicated? The password is created by system, but system has got to send you confirmation or, or, or you know, or when you, you as you are setting this password into system, you will type this password. Say my password is, for example, uh, you know, for example, command. One, two, three, or whatever. And I'm sending it. So anybody on the way, like uh, Mallory, can read this. That's called image dropping risk. So we have to make sure that we are setting the password or system is informing us something has to be confidential between the two entities. All right. Not, all right, that's fine. Now, now the question is that how is the password stored? You have created, like assuming you are Alice, you have created a password and system must store it against your name. For example, the identity is you, Alice and password is uh, command one, two, three. So when you, next time you log in with your identity and give your Come, uh, password, the system will check with the stored password whether you are allowed to use the system or not. How will this done? Where this password is kept? Anybody? Anyone? Is there in the system, right? What form it is in? Is it in clear text? Like something that you can read here, command one, two, three, or is it encrypted? or is hashed, just 10, 15 years back, it was all clear. It means system admin guy logs into the system, can see everybody's password. Today, they are kept as a hashed one. What is hash then cryptographic hash that we'll study later. Next question is how does system check the password? What is the method of checking the password? Okay, we'll study that. How easy it is to guess the password? Can you guess the password of your friend? Can you crack it? Note that a very large number of frauds, cyber frauds happen because of password is cracked or stolen or recovered. Okay, this is biggest possible cybersecurity threat that passwords are a cyber criminals can find out your password very easily. Okay. I will give you one exercise maybe later once you do, uh, uh, once we uh, study hashing, I will give you exercise to crack the passwords. All right. Okay, now the problem is that you use very simple password. Suppose your name is Neha. I'm sure there must be at least one Neha in the class. Okay, then uh, you can, uh, what are going to do? Either you are going to use your, uh, your 
mom's name very likely your father's name or your surname or maybe uh, your city where you live and then system will say that's not enough then you will uh, take one capital one capital letter is required you will yeah for example your mom's name is uh, maybe maybe pushpa so you'll say pushpa you make it capital p then you'll say now one digit is required you'll put one and then say special character is required then most likely you are going to use at the rate because the first one okay or at the or something now you create password like this and cyber criminals knows that cyber criminal know what is your mom's name father's name and how do you make your passwords right very simple so what you do is that you create the password which are easy to remember but is easy to crack also for cyber criminals now if you create very complex password you know one or maybe seven star or capital a w v something like that right it, this kind of passwords are extremely difficult to remember and difficult to crack okay now so they are not passwords are not easy to remember hence people said simple password and so usability is impacted denial of service okay now suppose you are using password wallet which will study later and is stolen now cyber criminal will try to break open that wallet but may not be able to then you cannot use that wallet then right okay attacker tries to think suppose you want to you know your user your friends user id in a bank okay account number you account number you can easily find out by uh, if somebody gives you a check entered check then you can find out the account number you try to log in using the account you try it three times then system will ask you password you give passwords and obviously it will be wrong system will lock the account what will happen then are you penalized for locking somebody's account yes or no no right so now a lot of effort is required in a friend's part to unlock it now you're creating denial of service for your friend or somebody else now social engineering thing right i mean your spouse asks you for the password would you give it or your intimate partner right your very uh, live in partner boyfriend girlfriend if you ask your password would you give should you give no person asks you for the password and you say no then there is a issue you stay your really if you give then there is cyber this possibility of a cyber threat possibility of you know something that you don't like okay ideally every time you log into system new password should be used but this is not convenient and then you know i mean one another big way of cyber crime is that cyber criminals prompt you to give the password it's very common thing yeah you know grandfather receives any phone call that uh, you know there is some some uh, uh, you know your bank account is in trouble and you need to do this transaction you will get an otp please tell me the otp or whatever and you may disclose all that right right so so an authorized and individual can immediately use the resource by social engineering social engineering is not whenever word social engineering comes nothing but tricking you or manipulating you or fooling you okay all right just another one minute we'll close so passwords are most vulnerable and go through this uh, case study where in, in just two years back august 2021 21 year old hacker scanned t mobile t mobile is one of the largest service provider in us so known ip address once you know ip address then you can scan it right 
and discovered unprotected router. We discussed this point. Routers, most of the routers in India are unprotected. It means that his user ID and password are default is given there, is written on the dubba or box, is is there in the website, right? So everybody knows what is Airtel's or for example uh, Geo's default user ID password for routers. Okay, so he discovered unprotected router, use it to gain access to data center. Okay, and then lo got the uh, login credential stored in the data center. And that gave access to 100 more servers. So basically in this way, you could steal the data of 40 million plus people. All right. Okay, now the problem is started here because the router was not protected with the password. Okay, all right. Okay, so please go through this. So we'll start from this point onwards uh, in the next class. So what we'll study is that how people pick passwords. Often they don't. Okay, Mo like most common password still is uh, guest in uh, US. And uh, these are the, this gives you you know what is the most popular password in the world, right? So for example, in in a survey, guest password was used for very large number of people, and then uh, password itself is a password. This word password is a password for very large number of people. Is the most popular password, right? So anybody can guess it, and these are also passwords which are commonly used. All right, so this will cover in the next class. Any question? Now you are going to get an assignment, which will I will post today. Read this paper about, read papers on Mirai botnet. So you will do some literature survey, go to internet and find out what is Mirai botnet is. And then you have to learn from that, how that boy or that person and one of them is Indian, of course. Uh, has actually uh, created a botnet, getting various uh, access to various bot or you know the IoT devices, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right. So you just read about uh, this and answer all these questions. I will send you this uh, assignment little later. Okay, all right. Okay. Any question? Okay. Just a minute. All right, okay. Thank you, sir.